the sum of squares between is simply equal to the distance that each mean value or each group mean value is away from the global mean okay x bar of g and we square that and we do that for them all okay so we calculate this for all of the groups okay that we have and what this gives us is this gives us i suppose uh, it gives us the total square distance the total square distance that our group means are away from this global mean so this is a measure of dispersion yeah okay now there's a little modification that we make here uh, we actually calculate the average of this so we calculate the mean sum of squares between okay uh, by dividing this by how many groups we have minus one and we also I suppose we take into consideration the individual group sizes okay when we make this calculation but effectively this mean sum of squares between measure this mean sum of squares of squares between measure okay effectively effectively this mean sum of squares between measure is telling us on our on on average yeah because we're dividing by how many groups we have although we're subtracting one it tells us on average uh, what the square distance is that the groups are away from this global global mean value okay so that's our first measure to keep in mind okay our second measure that we have okay is a measure where we calculate how I suppose how skinny okay or how wide on average the actual individual distributions are okay so our second measure okay let's take this distribution again over here okay so we have we have group B let's say we have group A and we have group C okay so the second measure what we do is we calculate I suppose within each group okay within each group okay uh, how skinny the groups are themselves okay so we calculate a measure of well I suppose we're really calculating a measure of variance yeah that tells us how skinny each of our individual groups are the test statistic for that is well what we need to do is for each observation okay we take away the mean value of the group itself and we square it and we sum these up for all of our observations okay so for each group that we have we calculate how far individual observations are away from their own respective group mean okay and we divide this by how many observations we have in total n minus how many group sizes how many groups we have okay? just keep in mind here is that as n gets large uh, the number of groups uh, won't really influence uh, this particular this particular uh, this particular number but effectively what we're calculating is we're calculating an average it's the average square distance that individual observations are away from their own group okay so this particular measure here is known as the mean the mean sum of squares the mean sum of squares between sorry the mean sum of squares within measure okay because we're measuring them within the groups themselves okay so this is the mean sum of squares within okay so now we have two measures of variance okay we have the mean sum of squares between that tells us how far or how far on average our distributions are away from each other or away from a global center point Okay, and we have the mean sum of squares within, which tells us how, on average, how skinny or how broad our distributions are. Okay, now equipped with both of these measures, okay, we construct what's known as a test statistic. Okay, so equipped, equipped uh, with, uh, let's say, the mean sum of squares between measure and the mean sum of squares within measure. Okay let's just keep in mind that the mean sum of squares within measure is how skinny how skinny each distribution is okay how skinny each distribution is okay okay uh, and the mean sum of squares between is on average on average okay how far are the distributions are the distributions or the groups okay are the distributions Okay, away uh, from each other, from each other. Okay. Uh, so what we do is we calculate the ratio of the between measure to the within measure. So we construct what's known as an F statistic. Don't forget our F statistic is set up to actually calculate the difference between two variances. Okay. So our F statistic is equal to it's it's the ratio of two variances. Now don't forget 
effectively what we calculated when we did the between measure was a sum of squared deviations yeah okay so actually this is a measure of variance okay so what we have is our mean sum of squares between measure goes in here and also let's keep in mind that our mean sum of squares within measure okay is also a measure of variance it's how far on average observations are away from their own mean value okay or their own center value so we have a mean sum of squares within measure okay so the question is how do we interpret this particular test statistic okay and i suppose there's a number of ways of, of trying to interpret this if we consider whether whether these values are large or small okay relative to each other okay relative to each other okay and let's just do a scenario okay let's say for argument's sake that the between measure the between measure is large and let's say the within measure the within is small so if i was to draw a graph of that what that basically means is that on average the groups are far apart from each other okay so on average the groups are far apart from each other okay and on average the groups are small or the groups are skinny okay so what we have is we might have something like this and we might have something like this and we might have something like like this they're far apart on average okay which means that at least one of them must be a good distance away from the others and on average they're small within okay which is air evidence to suggest that at least one of our groups in this case this group here is different to the other two or is different to at least one of the others okay that's one way we could interpret this yeah uh, the other way that we could interpret it is that the between measure the between measure is small okay and the within measure okay is small small okay so it's also possible that our groups are relatively close to each other on average groups a b and c okay? but their within measure how skinny they are is really really small relative to the smallness of how far they are apart so we have a distribution that looks like this so maybe it's very skinny and maybe this one is very skinny and maybe this one on average is also skinny so once again we don't have much shared area evidence to suggest that there's some difference okay uh, the other possibilities are that we have large large and that we have small large okay so let's say our between our between is let's say is small and relative to that our within measure is large okay so what we know now is this is that our distributions are close together on average they're close and the within measure so they're close together the between measure is small and their within measure is large which means that the distributions are pretty big if that makes sense okay so the distributions have an average average variance within that is quite large okay which is evidence to suggest that they share lots of area okay which is evidence to suggest that there's no difference between them okay uh, so this f statistic is a really really important statistic when it comes to the interpretation of our ANOVA value uh, if the F value is large okay so if the F value is large it's an F distribution okay an F distribution okay, is modeling this okay if the F this, this F statistic is large will be out in a tail okay if it's large okay if it's small we won't be in a tail okay so the F value is small and once again we've already set a rejection region if the f value is large enough and falls into the rejection region well then we know that we reject the null hypothesis so what is the hypothesis associated with an ANOVA okay so the hypothesis depending on how many groups we have the hypothesis that's associated with an ANOVA well, once again we have a null position and we have an alternative position the null position is that there's no difference between our groups in other words that the average of the first group is the same as the average of the second group which is the same as the average of the third group which is the same as the average of the fourth group the fifth group and it's the same as the average of the nth group okay depending on how many groups we have and the alternative is that at least one of these particular positions okay or at least one of these particular mean values is different to some other mean now we just write it in this fashion here okay uh, 
this does mathematically say that they're all different to each other okay but our interpretation our interpretation just from a shorthand perspective our interpretation of this particular line here is that is uh, that at least okay uh, one group okay has a mean different different to to another group okay okay and that's our default position that's our hypothesis once again our significance of our test is alpha is equal to 0 0.05 typically our test statistic okay is f is equal to the mean sum of squares between divided by the mean sum of squares within in a later video I will detail how to calculate these particular mean sums of squares between and the mean sums of squares within when we have some data to work off okay and our critical values okay our critical values okay our critical values are based off an F distribution an F distribution okay it's it's important to note that an ANOVA is a one-tailed test okay Okay. it's a one tail test so we put all of our alpha in the tail here and the question is what is this critical value that has in our case 0 0.05 of the area to the right hand side okay well it's based off degrees of freedom okay so our degrees of freedom of the between measure go here from our f distribution table perspective the degrees of freedom of our within measure are listed down here okay and we triangulate in and this gives us our critical value okay our decision is going to be well if f is bigger than c we reject okay otherwise otherwise we fail otherwise we fail to reject okay fail to reject okay guys I know that was quite long that was probably about 25 minutes there uh, but I hope that this uh, short video or this video uh, helped to demystify uh, the logic associated with an ANOVA okay uh, once again uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the mathematics development and support service uh, at the National College of Ireland uh, thanks for your time okay bye bye